Okay guys, so I've just got a couple of updates to my test bed. First of all, I've swapped the Swifttech Apogee XT for a EK Supreme HF nickel acetyl water block. Um, definitely better performance out of this water block, at least 5 degrees. Also higher flow. The flow um, of this water block is excellent. Uh, and it looks great in the test bed too, you know, the water block matches the Sabretooth P67 motherboard. Um, and I'm very impressed with it. So the other thing, I only just got this in. It's um, a 560Ti MSI Twin Frozer 2 edition. Now I really love these Twin Frozer 2 cards, I mean I water cool everything normally. Um, but because this is a review test bed, I'm pulling things in and out all the time, testing different video cards, etc. Um, I'm not actually going to water cool this card, so I wanted something that was high quality, um, very silent, you know, as a as a semi semi permanent card that I can run in the test bed uh, when I'm not reviewing hardware. So yeah, the military class components and things are very attractive to me for overclocking um, and also longevity so you know with the quality of the components uh, used in these MSI carts um, I think they're going to last a lot longer and certainly overclock a, a bit better but I'll have to try that out because this is my card so I'm going to review it um, and I'm going to overclock the hell out of it uh, see how far this thing can go so there will be a, few, a full review uh, within the, the next couple of days um, so I'll be having a good look at the card and running benchmarks and watching temperatures uh, and then doing some serious overclocking see if we can get GTX 580 performance out of this thing uh, and there's just one other little thing, tiny little thing that I did. I just chucked a couple of LEDs in the Bits Power Dual MCP655 pump top. Well, it's a Dual D5 pump top, I think. It's a D5 top times two. That's the exact model number of it. But uh, what's running in it is two SwiftTech MCP655s with bits power mod kits. Um, so yeah, that looks half decent. I wouldn't mind a bit more lighting in this water box. Like a big LED strip all the way around the outside or something. But this is the back of it. Uh, and it's not really visible from, you know, the way I've got it sitting. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'll just go over the specs, so they're NMX Magma fans so I've already told you the pumps and the pump top uh, and the mod kits on the pump, they're bits power all bits power fittings, feather coolant, feather tubing that's a Danger Den radiator reservoir uh, and the radiators are all three of them black ice SR1s and the water box itself is a Danger Den triple radiator water box and I've got um, magnetic dust filters on the front and all the fans are controlled by this fan controller here which is a NZXT um, LXE so there's two temperatures you can see there 33 degrees is the coolant and 32.3 is the temperature of this room um, so there's one more thing I'm going to get, do to the test bed, and that is get four gigabytes of G-Skill Rip Jewels X. So that will be the next thing happening pretty soon, and I'll be doing a review on those as well. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks now, and I'm looking forward to overclocking the card. And um, also pushing the whole platform to the limit because I haven't really had a chance to do that yet with this um, new motherboard. So I better just quickly go over the specs. I've got a 2600K G-Skill Trident 1600 MHz 88824, a MSI Twin Frozer 2 560Ti 
an Asus Sabertooth P67, NMAX Revolution 1250 watt, Western Digital Caviar Black Starter 3, just a cheap DVD drive, and a mic, um, yeah, I think it's a micro cool, Band Shadow 101 test bed. So there it all is. As you can see, I haven't even installed the drivers yet. Literally just put the card in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.